Hey guys, today I am going to talk about why I'm no longer buying the $1,000 magic product and it has to do with one person. So you know, I'm watching a video, I think they reposted on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, so I see on my feed from some of you guys and then I click on the video and who is selling this magic product, this $1,000 magic box that I'm gonna buy a lot of. It's somebody I have not seen in a long time. Now I have interacted with him on Twitter just randomly, right? When he tried to cancel me, uh, the Twitter dialogue is, I didn't delete it, so you can go back and look at it, past all the images, if you will. Brian Kibler, the guy who left Magic, the guy who was part of Armageddon Card Armageddon Con in Las Vegas that turned out to be a disaster. I don't know if they even pay their winners till today. So he got paid to attend an event that absolutely was a scam, but he got paid. So good for him. Like, you know, he's never the one who gets scammed. He's always the part of the scam, if you will. Even if he was just a guest or play, he was way overpaid. That convention was the most epic fail I've ever seen. They believe by inviting and paying people like Brian Kibler, they could have a huge turnout. Their turnout was peanuts. And this is what happens with Magic players. Magic players want to play the game of Magic. They don't care about Magic personalities, Magic celebrities, Magic influencers, right? And this is why I am very pissed off at Wizard of the Coast because they bought somebody I very, very much dislike and now he is an influencer, right, in Hearthstone. He's coming back to get money from Magic, and again, he's pitching a scam. So how did I know that this is, like, I was probably one of the most positive content creators, because honestly, if you open a box breaking channel and you have these boxes, yeah, it makes sense to me. You're gonna get lots of views, lots of impressions, things are going to go really, really well for you, right? Because, hey, you hit a retro, I mean, yes, you can hit really shady cards, which is the problem of any collector's booster, right? Or any high-end, uh, expensive, even sports card. You can obviously look at sports cards, but it's the hits, right? So I've looked at background breaks, it's the hits. They never, ever, a guy last night, his name is like Ku, he has, he's Asian, he has a little kid, he bought a Nebula for 1800 He hit a Kyler Murray snakeskin out of 88 which is maybe a $400 card. And then he was really upset and he just left. That's the danger of buying a high-end product is that not everyone's gonna get a good hit. But the way Jonar kept saying, oh, you could hit 10,000, you could hit 10,000, the way that they promote it is they never remember all the people who left who got basically, you know, effed, right? They only remember the big hits. And this is kind of my idea for this product was nobody's ever gonna remember the 50 pure laces. They're only gonna remember the double Black Lotus pack. Um, that's how box breaking goes. Um, a lot of box breakers, they won't tell, they won't even enter another person. They won't do their own box breaks, which is crazy because you get it at distribute you get at very cheap prices right so if a box breaker thinks that their own box break is a bad value that should be a sign that you probably shouldn't join that box break if you're only interested in value right if you're interested in attainment something like that hey go for it so when i when i remember brian kibler i remember the card arm emory garden thing they paid this guy a shit ton of money okay and instead of promoting it, instead of working on his social media, you know, doing fan meets and stuff like that, he went to the casino and started gambling at the slot machine. I remember that picture. And why, I guess one of the questions was like, why are you not at Card Elmer getting right now? Because they have you as a guest. Like, I think people thought that, you know, they didn't actually. No, they pay them. And this is how it works with these influencers. They get paid first. And when the winner doesn't get anything, when the vendors don't get anything, when the company goes bankrupt and nobody else gets paid, guess who got his money? Guess who got his bag? Brian Gibbler got his bag. And then he left Magic to go to Hearthstone for a bigger bag, right? And then now he's back to Magic, apparently. This guy tried to cancel me multiple times. I'm not gonna buy a product where it's him. 
In fact, you know, I pulled all my buy lists from Magic no more. I had to change my website and stuff, but I have not advertised on Twitter on buy lists, no more. I refuse to support a company that's main goal is to cancel people and their businesses. And you'd be like, oh, Tony, this is exaggeration. No, 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 they canceled me. I know they canceled me, they ca canceled Ta Travis Wu, they canceled Jeremy Hambly, they canceled a whole bunch of other people on a Facebook group. Magic for bad or magic for worse or whatever they were named. This, these are the same people who led that charge and now they're back again. So it's so interesting. You can be very hateful. You can be very, um, you, you can destroy someone's life like Teresa, like how they destroyed Teresa Nielsen's life. You know, no longer able, I mean, no longer an artist for magic. That was a big chunk of income, especially the original artworks that would go for hundreds of thousands of dollars that she could sell. But, you know, she got canceled and nobody stood up and the people who did stand up, they also got canceled. So. My point and magic is, you know, very, I mean, I'm trying to make this point very simple. I know why they're doing this. And it's not an economical reason. It's not, oh, they need to, the Hasbro stock is down and we promised our sh shareholders that stock will go up. So we got to pump a thousand dollars. They want this product to be opened by Logan Paul. They want this product to be opened by Backyard Breaks. Backyard Breaks is doing Pokemon, by the way. They're not doing magic. They want a high-end product for breakers to, you know, jump on. I thought this would be a perfect product for me to jump on, for me to break, you know, and for me to get China launch the channel, right? It was around the same time period and it would be a high-end product and when you're breaking you're not really worried you know when i open my own product i've never broken before for anyone else when i open my own product yeah you're going to lose money you probably lose 50 percent if you're lucky if you break your own product this product you might lose 60 70 percent but if it's not your money if somebody else paid for it to break and you're actually making money just like backer breaks makes on nebulars and so on so when a guy paid $1,800 for a nebula last night, coup something, he has a small child, he's Asian. I feel bad for him and he commented, man, I got blanked in the blank. And he did. Well, the breaker, Jonah, he sold it for 1,800. Assuming he paid 900 for it, he's up $900. The guy who got blanked in the blank, he's down. I mean, it was a Kyler Murray snakeskin PSA 10. That's the exact card it was. I checked the price on them and you know, and everyone in the audience is like, wow, amazing. And it's like, no, it's not amazing. The last sale was like probably $400 or something. And nobody even wants Kyler Murray is not a popular player right now. He doesn't really have the liquidity that you would want. A snake skin with no auto, I mean, for $1,800 plus tax, almost $2,000 for this guy this coup guy and he'll be back for more. He'll be back for more. He was just upset that day. He'll come back, buy some more nebulas, right? For 1800, get his butt at blank again for 1800, right? And so, so two things, I saw Brian Kibler come back and I saw this guy buy the nebula. I was like, wow, that's like me. So like this nebula, it's one single card, by the way, it's a repack, one single card. It's called a, flamethrower, that's all these guys, they sell a lot of repacks, um, diamonds and so on, gems. And so I'm watching this guy buy 1800, which probably cost him 2000 after tax. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, this guy's the exact guy. He's Asian. He looks like he has a little bit of money. He'll be the guy who'll buy a thousand dollar pack for me. And then you look at how upset he is and angry. And you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to be part of that. Right. So like in, in sports cards, a single card for a repack, a repack, by the way, goes for 1800 at backyard breaks. And the average I've seen is under, definitely under a thousand, right? Uh, in terms of actual comp values, actual sales, not what people buy it now as if there is a sale at all. Many of these cards have no sales because no one wants them. So it doesn't matter what you ask for them if there's no sale. Uh, with the current down market, yeah, $1,800, $2,000 is a shit ton to spend on one card.
but that was the audience that I thought, you know, I would be, but then you see Brian Kibler, you know, it's a scam. Just like Carmageddon. When I see Brian Kibler promoting a product, I know he got paid very well to promote the product. He doesn't really believe in the product, but he'll smile and tell you a thousand dollars is a good deal for this pack. And because that is the person they chose for this type of product, because they probably couldn't hire anyone else, that's when I realized, oh, shit. This is a scam. That the thousand dollar pack is a scam. Otherwise, why would they hire Brian Kibler to do it? All I know about Brian Kibler is he tried, he likes to cancel people who have different opinions and beliefs than him. And he likes to, you know, he gets paid. If anyone gets the bag, it will be Brian Kibler. Uh, even if the Hearthstone is doing poorly, hey, it doesn't matter. He'll get the bag. So anyway, that's kind of my reaction as a Magic player and having experienced even recently, maybe two years ago, Brian Kibler on Twitter. They... All I asked was for the Golden Guardians to get rid of their coach who turned out to be Brian Kibler's friend because I thought they could get a better coach. There were better coaches available. I was a fan of Golden Guardians and then they tried, they tried to cancel me for being a fan. So I have not been a fan for, for of League of Legends at all since that point in time. I even stopped watching League of Legends. If this is how they treat their fans and this is part, what Brian Kibler is part of, this is how Brian Kibler thinks fans should be treated. That if you offer even a little bit of criticism, right? Like I didn't, you know, the guy was not a good coach. He was not. Now he's a manager or he, he's the CEO of the team. Fine, that's fine. He got promoted up. But he wasn't the right coach. And I think he knows that now. I mean, he knows that. He's still part of the team. He just wasn't a good coach. I mean, you can look at the records. You can look at what, how many games Gordon Guardians won and lost. I mean, this is not rocket science, right? So that's how they treat fans. The exact way I got treated by Brian Kibler. If you disagree with him or his friends, they will cancel you. That's all they know. That's all they have ever known. And that's how they became so successful in life, right? They attack small businesses like mine. They attack people like Teresa Nielsen and her small business. And they use that attack to gather support, donations, and the bag. They're gonna do it again because they're getting desperate. You can smell the desperation. Anyway, hey, the Easter own, but I am buying this shitty product no more. So F you, Wizard of the Coast.